Hello everyone, well this is just going to be a quick little video tonight, I've got something more for the weekend. Yeah, input validation. Never trust user input. You never know what the user is going to input into your program, into your website. Yeah, this is something I've discussed before with SQL injection. Yes, that can happen as a result of users putting in things that they shouldn't. But what if a user puts in a technically valid string, but it is very long, what will the web server do? Depends what your programming's done with it, but if you're going to let in a very long string and process it, you can cause the web servers to be delayed. <laughs> to carry out extra processing on something that is possibly meaningless. And one of the guys at work did like doing that to various websites. One in particular was the company's website, that if you'd put a very long string in a search box, caused the web server to fall down. Pretty bad, that. I'm not even sure that's been fixed, so yeah, I'm definitely not saying the company I work for in case uh, someone wants to try us on our website. But yeah. So I've put together a little something, so let me just take myself out of the frame there. A little something I've done. Using a program called MP64, which you can use to make rule sets for Hashcat. Yeah, MP64, so I've got a comma separated input of lowercase, comma, lowercase, comma, decimal, comma, another decimal, and a little bit of something, and then we're going to get rid of all the lines, replace them with spaces, then replace the spaces with nothing. Yeah, it's just kind of something I had to do, I couldn't think of how to do said to get rid of new lines. I can do it to replace something else with new lines, but anyway, look, I'll show you the results afterwards. So we take a look at the output files, we have a file of 2 megs and 4 megs. So temp.txt looks like that. A lot of letters separated by commas, and we got, uh, well, let's see, 990 lines. That's all on a single line, so we've actually got um, yeah, 4 million characters long on one line. And the other file I created was just letters and numbers. Yeah. A seemingly benign input. So let's put that seemingly benign input onto a web server that has the protection for extra long strings. It's taken a little while to paste that, so I'm just talking away while I wait for the paste to appear. Ah, oh, there it goes. So apparently 4 meg of nonsense takes a while to paste in. So yeah. I'm going to put that in there, save changes, and we can see how long it's going to take for my web page to process that. So uh, about 4 seconds four seconds before it's decided just to get rid of it. So what happens if I go and process all that? Let's see what the delay is this time. Again, taking a while to paste that lot of nonsense in. There it goes. So, go on, do something with it this time. Oh, wow, that's a bit different, isn't it? See, we're still spinning. Ooh, nearly seven seconds. A couple of seconds added just to do something with that nonsense input. In fact, you try and process all that nonsense input. The loading of the web page increased, but that is something that's going on behind. And this is just what the program's doing. It's kind of doing what it should be doing at the moment now and attempting to process a list that shouldn't have been processed. <laughs> anyway. Oh yeah, loading's definitely increased up to nearly 100% on the Raspberry Pi. That's something else to bear in mind, it is a Raspberry Pi. So, a very lightweight device. What else can I do with an extra long input? Put it here as well. I know this is going to cause problems, but it's not going to cause problems where you might think it will. So it's actually just going to throw it out on the web server. This is what I found happen. Yeah, it's just not doing anything with it. In fact, what is it doing with it? It was doing this earlier, error 431, oversized request header. Anyway, I know that's all fairly underwhelming. It didn't really do much on this particular web server, but... Um, Strings like that can cause things, or poorly made things, to fall over. And if you want the code, it's basically this. Um, I do if is set for the particular variable I'm covering this function for either post or get. And then I'm doing if string length is less than or equal to maximum length. So if it's all valid, return a true, otherwise return a false. And by doing false, it should reject out the function that's calling this. And yeah, I'll show you this particular function, config.php. So I've literally done if filter string for the particular variable I'm looking for, blcustom, the post method, 
up to 2,000 characters. If it's not compliant with that, don't process it. I've got quite a lot of regex functions. I'm a big fan of those. Regex to validate the input, but it's also worth validating the string length as well because a compliant input could still cause a web server to fall over. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you all later.